successful approach of modeling renal stress has been, uh, I would say, the Bosinesque approximation. It is an approximation that considers the effect of turbulence, especially the diffusivity of turbulence, as if it is molecular diffusivity. So think of what molecular diffusivity does. So if you zoom in into molecular scale, okay, and you have molecules doing random motions, right? Okay, you have a lot of molecules just uh, going around. And the velocity of the molecules in most cases are, uh, in, especially in subsonic flows, are much higher than any bulk velocity of the flow. So if you draw a, any fictitious surface that cuts across the sea of molecules, you're going to see that molecules crosses this fictitious surface all the time. And if you have a mean velocity gradient that goes like that, that is, if you have a mean velocity gradient whose component is not zero uh, in the normal direction of the fictitious surface, like, like for example here, you're going to see that whenever a molecule crosses this fictitious surface from below to above, it is more likely to have a velocity that is, have an x velocity of higher or lower. Whenever something crosses oh, to it above, crosses the lower. yeah, it crosses more likely with a lower velocity in x direction because it comes from a region with less x velocity. Maybe the last collision it has was with another molecule more likely to be in this region, right? Which is more likely to have a a negative velocity. So whenever a molecule crosses this fictitious surface from below to above, it's more likely to have a negative velocity compared to the average velocity here, right, at this fictitious surface. And the opposite is also true. Whenever something is, another molecule is crossing the fictitious surface from above, it is more likely to have a positive uh, deviation of x velocity. By deviation, I mean deviation from the x velocity taken as a mean at this point. So there is a positive or negative correlation between the x velocity and y velocity of the molecules. So let's now, for example, let's think of x tilde and y, uh, ux tilde and uy tilde describing the velocity of the molecules minus the mean velocity of the molecules, which means the bulk velocity, right? If you take this, is this positive or negative? negative. It is negative because whenever a, a molecule crosses from below to positive, uh, from below to above, it has a positive y velocity. And whenever that happens, it's more likely to have a negative x velocity or smaller x velocity. So that means it is less than zero. Okay. And the opposite case is when, if you have a velocity profile that is like that, that has a, so, so the blue case corresponds to if you have a positive partial u, partial y, you have a negative correlation. Well, let's take the red case when you have a, po uh, have a negative du dy, right, this is x. The opposite is true. Whenever a molecule crosses from below to above, it has a higher than average x velocity and whenever a molecule crosses from above to below it has a lower than average x velocity so in that case we have a positive uh, we have a yeah positive correlation between x and y velocities okay so what actually controls the ratio between 
the correlation and the velocity gradient. What are the factors that controls the ratio? So let's say whenever a particle collides with something, its memory has lost, for example, let's assume that. Whenever a molecule collides with a non, a non, another molecule, it kind of uh, starts to forget where it comes from. Does it come from below or above? Which region it comes from? Then, how much correlated the velocity is? It's going to depend on how, how long the molecule has traveled in the y direction, right? If the molecule can travel a long distance before it collides with another molecule, then when the molecule crosses this line, it is more likely to be from a very distant some, somewhere. So if it crosses from below to, to above, it is more likely to come from somewhere way below with a way lower velocity or way higher velocity than the velocity here, right? Then it can bring more momentum from below to above. So the ratio between the here the molecular stress, right? This is the molecular stress over the negative of partial u partial y is proportional to the mean free path of the molecules. And what else? and also how fast it is moving in general, right? So if the molecule is moving fast, then there are more molecules crossing this line per, per time, right? It is, also, it is also proportional to how dense the molecules are because if the molecules are denser, there are also more molecules crossing that line, okay? So basically L and uh, rho, which is the average density, and also the average velocity of, I mean, this velocity is not the mean velocity, but the velocity of the molecules. So individual velocity of the molecules. All right. So the same analogy applies for a turbulent case except for what is crossing these fictitious lines are no longer molecules but patches of continuum fluids you have all the unsteady eddies that brings fluid from below the fictitious line to above the fictitious line and also brings and sometimes Sometimes the flow goes from below to above. Sometimes the flow goes from above to below, right? It's all unsteady. So when the flow goes from below to above, let's again consider the blue case where the velocity is like that, right? So velocity is higher on the top and lower on the bottom. In this case, whenever a fluid, not particle, but a fluid blob, a blob of fluid travels from below to above, is its velocity more likely to be higher or lower than the average? It's more likely to be lower, the same as the molecular case, right? And also when it goes from top to bottom, it's more likely velocity to be higher. And again, what determines the ratio between now the fluctuating uh, velocity or the renal stress in this case? and uh, the um, the mean velocity gradient it's the same thing right so it does depend on the density that's one thing it also depends on some length scale right where is this blob of fluid come from like how far does it travel before it stops Right. So, okay, so if you track a particle in a turbulent flow, it doesn't move forever. It moves 
and then it'll stop and reverse direction and go to some random direction afterwards. So this L instead of the mean flow path, mean free path of a molecule is like the mean path of a fluid patch. It's called the uh, uh, the Prandtl mixing length. Okay, so this is the. Okay, and also you have a U, but it is no longer, uh, it is no longer the velocity So, so it is no longer the velocity of the of the individual molecules. Okay, but it's a velocity of. Uh, uh, let's see. So it's a it's a characteristic velocity of the fluctuation now, and the characteristic velocity of, of the fluctuation by by the Prandtl mixing length uh, argument, it is proportional to so so how much so how much fluctuation is the of uh, velocity fluctuation on this line depends on first of all where is the blob of fluid come from and how different is the mean velocity there right where the fluid comes from so assuming the blob of fluid comes from a distant of l the Prandtl mixing length away from this fictitious line and this place is going to have a velocity different from the mean velocity here by how much by l times partial u partial y right so this is like the the averaging the averaged fluctuation in the velocity at this point so here we are assuming that uh, so so here this argument gives you the averaging the average fluctuating velocity in the x component but here we also assume that turbulence is isotropic over here so that the x direction fluctuation is roughly similar in scale as the y directional fluctuation which which gives you combined with rho gives you how much of these particles are transported okay uh, across this fictitious surface then the Boussinesque approximation which is one of the most uh, uh, successful models for for turbulence it's saying that you tilde x you tilde y bar is proportional to partial ux partial y plus partial uy partial x okay so you are absolutely correct that the renal stress by definition is a tensor that is symmetric or anti-symmetric 